What's up, everybody? Thralls Metal here once again. I'm the Croc Neck. I'm Jam and John. And we have yet another album review for you, and one that I thought about not reviewing, <laughs> but you know, I, I kind of wanted to come back to this band because I have just an interesting history with this band. Uh, we're going to go over the latest offering from Blut Os Nord, Disharmonium, Nahab. This also came out on the 25th of August on Debemore Morty Productions. This band formed in 1994 in France from the severed tentacle of a elder god, probably Cthulhu. I don't know. This is their 15th full length overall. They also have five EPs and four splits too. They're very, very busy making very, very creepy music. This is avant-garde black metal. I guess you could describe it as. For me, I know these guys love uh, H.P. Lovecraft and H.P. Lovecraft's big thing is indescribable horror. This is indescribable horror. The album, <laughs> yeah. Uh, this, this is this is legit freaky, and I have not listened to this band actively for uh, about twenty years. And by listening to it actively, I I picked up one album. It was Mort. Uh, I was not a fan. And it's one of the few albums I brought back to the place that I bought it and say, here, can I trade this in for something less horrifying? And I forget what I got in trade, but it didn't sound anything like Mort. Yeah, I've listened to this band in passing over the years. And again, it's been quite some time. I haven't even thought of this name in probably just as long, to be honest. You guys, if you know, you watch this channel, you know I love Dissonant music and back many years ago going on a hunt for dissonant music i came across bands like blue dust nord and ulcerate and you know just uh terrifying dissonant albums and th this record is no joke I i'm gonna be honest you know we've reviewed quite a few horrifying things i would call portal portal <laughs> over the years even that first uh primitive man record i listened to i thought man this is disturbing but but this record is on a different page i'll be honest during this entire listen i kept waiting for someone to sneak up behind me and pull my chair into hell it was that unnerving as long as it's your chair not mine and and that's what i suggested when he called out to demons during this <laughs> listen and he said if you're gonna take anyone take him i was making to an me. offering so i stayed safe and no. your soul is much more pure and bright and sunshiny than me they don't want me and You're... my argument was wouldn't you rather pull the dickhead that um you know gave the call out to pull me because that's kind of a dick move they're all and about so, dick moves and it's your house we listen to it in your house yeah so your house is now tainted more tainted than it was anyway oh i probably need to get like one of those sage scrubs to fucking you know cleanse the air especially the speaker yeah it's, this this was this was dark uh, musically i would say this kind of sits like somewhere between like portal and imperial triumphant though this is way scarier than imperial triumphant in fact I think this would make Imperial Triumphant shit their fucking death shrouds. <laughs> this is all about the most haunting, layered atmosphere possible. And this is part two of the Disharmonium run. Uh, the first one, Undreamable Abysses. I, well, skipped over it because, again, like, you know, my, my uh, interest in this band is... Uh, kind of minimal, but I know the fans hype it up. I know uh, Jeff over at Gas Mask and Hand Grenades loves this band, and man, like, Jeff, yeah, dude. what in the world, man? <laughs> like you, all right. I thought I listened to disturbing music. I'm sure this guy thinks he listens to disturbing music. I do. But you, sir, take the cake. We went back and listened to a couple songs off of the other album, the one that you know this one we're doing now is the second part of. And while I find that record disturbing, I don't find it quite as disturbing as this. Yeah, I think he plans on having a listening party for this one. And uh, dark room, light some candles, break out a Ouija board, have fun with it. Yeah, really. I, in turn, am going to go home. I already told my girlfriend, I said, I'm coming home and we're turning on kitten videos and I'm sleeping with the lights on. Because... A majority of what I find makes this record horribly disturbing is not the music, although the music adds to it, for sure. Um, it's the vocals. Holy shit. Yeah. Uh, it sounds like there's not one vocalist, even though there's one vocalist listed. This is a three-piece in the studio, but 
the sounds like there are a thousand demons chewing on musical instruments and screaming at times, but the vocals in particular <laughs> are just haunting as hell. Uh, you get gasps and whispers and growls and chatter and chants, moans and like droning moans if that makes any sense at all like, every just... spooky noise that a human vocal cord can make yeah yeah i think is on here to make that even more intense there's whispers over growls like they're layered over top so it adds just a a, a further form of creepiness like in the song the ultimate void of chaos which is actually more of a song like there's definite droning like chugging guitar and and blast beats and it was something easier to latch on to as far as a song was concerned but i found that to be even more horrifying with the whispers layered over the growls like come on it's like they're swirling around yeah like, there, there's a weird thing about this album in terms of just how it sounds like first off the production is dense it is thick and murky there are lots of low, you know, chugging, droning riffs and just weird atonal tremolos and scales where the notes just feel off. Like, you know, like the first couple is only like, okay, and then it just goes off into a completely different run. It's like, no, you're you're doing you're doing that wrong. And they're like, no, this is how we summon things here. Like, you know, like I did it when I was a kid and I I still would do it as an adult if I had one, but like you take records that you listen to and you by hand like slow them down and then move them back and forth just to hear like that yeah. sound. And a lot of what those notes per se and those scales sound like is just like a constant like ascending and descending just like roller coaster almost of these crazy notes yeah and it's the blend and the layers like you know the the bottom heavy droning chugs that are on here especially on like the endless multitude there are some huge droning riffs and it, it doesn't necessarily sound like it's just guitar and bass. Like, I know that the uh, drummer plays the synths as well, and the synths are <laughs> absolutely horrifying on here. But I think there's bass synths kind of, like, layering it out. Like, it feels like there's more low end to it. And that's just one more thing that just kind of contribute to the cacophony of noise and horror on here. I will say I do think this is maybe a little bit more tuneful in spots than, say, like, recent outings from Portal. Like, we're not even counting Hag Balbia. That's just a noisy fucking nightmare that will make a child piss itself if he <laughs> fucking listens to it. It's, it's not for human ears. But The Endless Multitude, uh, Queen of the Dead Dimension. She mm -hmm. sounds pleasant. And uh, Nameless Rights surprisingly have some interesting, catchy moments. They still remain dissonant and atonal. Yep. And that's generally the layer on top, like the icing on the horrible cake full of worms, bone chips, and like human skin. Uh, and people, like a tentacle too. There's definitely a tentacle in there. Oh, the. Yeah, no, maybe an eyeball. But the riffs underneath actually supply some cool melody. And I have to say, the drum work in here is like fantastic. Top notch. Um, reminds me a lot of Ulcerate, uh, Jamie St. Moret. Not so much in his blast beats although there are blast beats in here they they do appear in more towards the end too um and i'll get into that later but it reminds me of like the the slower more groovy moments of ulcerate mostly like stuff found on the destroyers of all anytime ulcerate slows down it, it's got these weird like off time signature things and like crazy symbol accents and that's predominantly what this drummer does although again there are blast beats but it reminds me a lot of Ulcerate. And there's some like really interesting polyrhythms that get peppered in there mm -hmm. and how the riffs work in and out of that. There, there's like a weird sort of phasing effect with just, you know, this production too, I think. But oh, yeah. Yeah, like how, you know, it gets louder, quieter. The vocals move around a lot, which, you know, will have you looking over your shoulder at any given point if you're listening to it, you know, at a high volume. Well, right, and th that whirlwind of vocals, I think, adds an extra percussive element. You got to really hone in to listen for it, but, like, it's a constant swell, and they constantly move back and forth, and it's almost like just added rhythmic with these 
just again absolutely terrifying sounds. It was creepier than hell when they said his name and address. <laughs> oh man, they are definitely going to find him. They said Nick's social security number and a, list of, <laughs> and a list of his fears. So listen for that too. Both of those things are incredibly useful. They'll probably say your name too. Just you know, listen for it. Um, but man, the atmosphere is probably the thing that <laughs> that sells this more so than uh, the musicianship. I mean, I think the musicianship for what they're doing is impressive. Agreed. It's amazing that just sounds can be absolutely horrifying. Like even without the vocals, even in the quieter moments, you get moments that feel like something sneaking up in you. Like again, Queen of the Dead Dimension <sighs> kind of drops out there for a little bit and it just there's this melody like du, 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 like something yeah is, yeah like something like sneaking a, up on yeah, you like michael myers like no i'm fucking gonna stick you or the end of forgotten eon you, dude the final minute of forgotten <laughs> eon um dude. look the final minute when everything cuts out it sounds like a like a ticking clock I think it's hand drums. It, it, I think it is too, but it sounds like just the pulse of a ticking clock. But like somehow, with only that and these like whispering voices, like it still swells. It's got a good build on it. The thing I like about the end of Forgotten Eon, and actually it had me on edge because it, I think it's hand drums. It sounds like hand drums, maybe, but I think it's designed to sound like something galloping towards you, like. Uh, I don't know, like death riding a horse. Sure. But um, <laughs> as it gets louder, like you're preparing yourself for a jump scare. I was too. I was. I was, I was like, I was totally. I totally was. I thought, wouldn't it be a dickhead move that they could get away with at this oh, yeah. point? Because you're so, you're so unnerved by the time you get to this point where it's like, wouldn't it be a dickhead move just to come out and just full blown like scream at you, like? And I was waiting for it, and it never happened. Thank fucking God. But I was waiting for it. To be honest, at, at the final few seconds of that song, I was so on edge waiting for that jump scare that I felt kind of like dizzy. I was like, oh shit. It's not the only horrifying moment of quietness. <laughs> Far from it. There are three interludes, Hideous Dream Opus 1, 2, and 3. And while I don't necessarily think that there's a need for three interludes, I get it because of the content of this record. And while I thought the first one was pretty terrifying because it's how the record opens, horrifying ghostly atmosphere, right? It's the second one that got me. Off in the distance, there's a female screaming and it gets progressively louder. And then there's more voices whispering on top of it. And I was genuinely like, dude, fuck this. Dude, this was <laughs> either written in a haunted insane asylum or those are the screams of the kidnapped victims in the studio surrounded by candlelight and people in shrouds like, you must scream for us. Coincidentally, if you don't play any of this at a haunted house this Halloween, you're fucking up. Oh, play it at your Halloween party. Like, Do that's, it. That's a sure, you know, tell, like, listen, this is how it's going to be. If you don't like it, fuck off. And well, now that you've heard this, ghouls are going to follow you and... You know, it's kind of like the whole Hag Balbia thing, like, you know, I Trojan horsed it on him, and now you have to get someone else to listen to it, otherwise that ring creature is going to come you're up. Right? You're right? Like, on the TV. You're going to look like that chick in the closet in the first movie. Ooh! <laughs> oh, man. I know. I'm thinking that, about it. I saw that in theaters. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> yeah. Dude. Ugh. Ugh. But even without these interludes, and I'm going to say there's enough atmosphere on this album to creep you out thoroughly without three interludes of additional creepy noises. But the Black Vortex <laughs> might be the most, like, inhuman sounding song. Like, it does not sound like it was written by people. The soundscapes in that song are horrifying. Uh, the opening of it, it sounds like demonic horns. Like French horns, I mean, it makes sense because they're French, but, like, it's... This ascending and descending scales, if you can call them scales, because it's all harmony scales. So, like, it's the most disturbing notes I can think of, but played by French horns, maybe? I I'm not 100%. I mean, I, I assume it's probably the synths. I don't know. Like, you know, trying to find any additional, uh, you know, musicians on here slash, you know, uh, cultists or whatever they call them that are in the band. Uh, it, it's kind of difficult, but it, it sounds... 
again, like horns, but uh, again, just fucking played in the most terrifying way. Like, honestly, it sounded like Portal doing a cover of like a 1940s cartoon. Like, you know, like, hey, let's take that whimsical number and change it all to like weird atonal noises and... God, I can almost kind of see the cartoon for it. Like, I don't know. It's like one of those, like, you're going to hell one. With the, like, the right, right, right. Like, you know, cartoons and shit. Like, it, it's terrifying. Like, the whole song is easily the most unpleasant thing on the entire album. And that is saying something because <laughs> the rest of this album is really nuts. Albeit with, like, again, spots of melody. And, and one that really stood out was Nameless Rights. That song is yeah. actually really catchy. Like it's it's more musical. It's more it really of a is. song. I mean, it's still got a horrifying soundscape to it, but it has more musical moments. Like there's a definite riff going on there. There's definite you know groovy moments. There's definite awesome drum work. It changes around a lot of the dynamics that are already on there. Like the keys actually play like a cool supporting melody. Like the droning riffs actually have like. A repeated hook that is not entirely like you know atonal and dissonant uh it's you know maybe the single i don't know like i don't think this band writes singles but it's kind of pretty up until like the key change <laughs> but it's kind of cool to hear kind of shift back and forth like you get this really interesting catchy melody like oh all right maybe they're kind of laying off all the fucking darkness for a second and then it just shifts keys and like nope there it is there it is yep but I don't know, like, this album was interesting in the sense that, like, God, like, the, the musical approach to this. Like, this is essentially just defying conventional song structure and, you know, chord structure, musicality, and just going for, like, the most dark, haunting thing possible. And, I mean, they definitely achieved that, but, I mean, it, it is oddly alluring, I, know, I found myself kind of drawn in by this yep. one, and uh, you know, like where Portal kind of just put me off on a vow. This one, like, all right, I'm curious what happens next. I mean, I know it's gonna be fucking scary, but I'm just kind of curious about it because there's again, like, more musicality to this. I think, even despite the fact that some of the higher register tremolos kind of sound like someone running a belt sander over an old, out of tune cello. I I got into it, and I mean, if anything, my sleep paralysis demon is going to fucking love this. I just kind of wanted to circle back. Forgotten Aeon, I know we talked about the end of that song, but the beginning of that song, what a way to close an album. It is immediately <laughs> horrifying. It is the largest swell of voices. It, it, it's every voice. I, I would compare that song to... A mixture of every song, every note, and every voice appearing on this record all at once, slammed into one song. Like, it is so indescribable as far as what I'm hearing. I, I just, I, I don't know. But I've never heard anything like that. The immediate terror of Forgotten Aeon is almost unforgettable. It was like every ghost in the Overlook Hotel whispering in your ear at once. It's really interesting, though, uh, because, like, underneath it, there are some, like, really cool breakdown riffs, mm -hmm. but that layer on top, it, it's God. so fucking thick. It's suffocating. Yeah, like, yeah, this, this album is claustrophobia, and, you know, you stuck in a dark room, too. Like, it, it's a small, dark room, and it's 100% haunted. Yep, and it's moist in there like you every now and again you get dripped on by something and every now and again a bug crawls across your arm you better hope it's like, a bug jesus it's unnerving as far as negatives are concerned i'm actually not quite sure that i have any because i think that even the negative thing i have is positive for this album my negative thing would be and it was almost immediate was is it's hard to focus on anything outside of the disturbing vocals and the ghastly atmosphere yeah. But to this record's credit, I almost think that that's the point. I think the point is to take you so far outside your comfort zone. The chaos of the music becomes less of a focus than the chaos of the album. And I think that's the point. Yeah, I mean, I, I get the whole vibe of this. And I mean, as much as some of these songs really just aren't my thing, 
I get what they're going for, and uh, to their credit, I think they nailed it. This made me feel like my fucking brain was full of worms and yeah. ants, and um, yeah, sleep with the lights on, kind of, kind of shit. But yeah, uh, honestly, I, I kind of enjoyed a, a pretty good part of this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna give it three. I, I think it's pretty solid for what it is. It isn't something I would listen to often. It would definitely be something I would subject someone to around Halloween just to Ugh. fuck with them for oh, damn sure. Man. But, you know, there is a musicality here that I can appreciate in terms of like just the creative process and uh, doing weird shit in the production. Like, they really worked hard at making this sound creepy as hell, but underneath all those layers of just uh, nightmarish everything. There's some really cool stuff going on, and you can clearly tell that this band is very technically savvy mm-hmm. and um, fiercely creative. Like mm-hmm. there, there's a lot going on in here, and the album is very uniform <laughs> for what it is. It flows really well, though. If anything, I would probably move the Black Vortex to the last track because that is the most haunting, creepy song on there. Like it, all three of the interludes combined don't have as much creep as that song. But uh, yeah, if you were a fan, again, of uh, Imperial Triumphant and Portal are probably the first ones I can think of. Mm-hmm. And maybe Death Spell Omega without, like, you know, the racist fucking dickweed. Uh, it's very similar to that. Check it out. And just remember, John, if you don't say anything nice about this album, it will come and murder you in your sleep. <laughs> I'm actually going to give this a four in spite of that caveat. <laughs> I was grossly entertained. I scared a four um, out of them. N- no. Th- this record scared a four <laughs> out of them. <laughs> um, look, first of all, I'm going to need an exorcism after this is done. I still, even while sitting down here joking about this record, it's not necessarily the music that's stuck in my head. It's legit some of these vocals. I can still hear it. I can still hear a couple of those moans and, like, the whispers and shit. Like, it kept me entertained, regardless of the fact that I was legit scared shitless at times. I fucking enjoyed it. Like, I I am a fan of grossly dissonant music. I like unsettling sounds. Like, to me, that makes metal not only, like, jammable, but just entertaining. Like, these guys are definitely creative. I will say that to the nines these guys are definitely creative if i had known ahead of time how creepy this record was i legit would have paid one of our friends to come and stand in the fucking basement and as nick came down the stairs with the speaker they would have jumped out and scared him and it would have been worth every penny i would have paid somebody a hundred bucks to stand there and wait till the end of the album um they lose teeth whatever i wouldn't have paid for your dental (laughs) not a big deal um i had a great time I really did. I really thought that this record was pretty fucking neat. The The music, while it wasn't my main focus, because it, it's, it really is hard to really grasp onto some things sometimes. It is fiercely technical. Like, these guys definitely know what they're doing. Although it wasn't the biggest focal point, like, it, it's still good. It When it does appear, uh, mainly uh, Nameless Rights and The Ultimate Void of Chaos, and even a little bit in the end. I personally would leave Forgotten Neon at the end because that's where I think, like, the biggest swell of just sheer terror is. I mean, that but, closing part's cool. It, it really is. If you're a Portal fan, if you're an Imperial Triumphant fan, if you're an Ulcerate fan, if you're a fan of... Uh, man, just genuinely horrifying music. This is definitely up your alley. Um, this is not something I will probably soon listen to again, at least not at night in the dark. I really wouldn't suggest that. You could, though, but I wouldn't. He will. So, if you enjoyed this review, give it a thumbs up, and if you are new to the channel, subscribe, because we do stuff like this all, all the, the time. time. Well, not quite like this. Occasionally. Actually, I hope to not hear anything quite like this for quite some time but we do reviews and things like this all the time yeah generally we're kind of just pussies when it comes down to this but pretty sure you got that watching this review oh i'm sure anyway we are also on patreon if you'd like to help us out with that there is a link down below to thrallsmiddle.com which is again currently under construction but our patreon link is on our channel uh when the site shows up again we will have shirts 
they are ordered, they are done, and... They're packaged, and they are on their way. So, yeah, we're going to have a nice little announcement for those and show them off and do a giveaway for one when they come. And then after that, of course, the site will be open. As for other news, we have a show we're promoting. Our, again, local hometown venue, Frankie's, is finally back and open after four years. And Innovations Concerts has come back around and decided to book shows there. They booked a really killer one, October 1st, 25 bucks. Doors are at 6 p.m. Revocation, Unearth, Entheos, and High Command, a pretty banger bill uh, to bring metal back to this area, as well as some other things Thralls of Metal might get into. I don't know yet. That's further on down the road, but, you know, there's always stuff coming. Last but not least, thank you to all of you who have subscribed, who continue to tune in and watch us and comment and pretty much fuel the fire for us to do this. Like, we are so thankful that you're still here and, uh, you know, to our, our new subscribers, welcome to the family. To the people that have been around, thank you for sticking around, but we couldn't do this without you guys. Yeah, there's a lot of tolerance on your part, and I, <laughs> I commend you for that. Actually, we kind of thrive Me too. on that. Uh, but yeah, seriously, I'm going to go ahead and thank you one more time just because this is that part of the video, and I mean it every time I say it, you guys fucking rule. Yep. And with that, we will catch you later.